we have a lot of friends of the show, guys that we love to have on. And not often do we get them to join us in studio. Yeah, this is unbelievable. But Steve Sands, our boy from the Golf Channel, one of our favorites, maybe our favorite guy. Yeah. Probably the, probably the guy that I've watched the most. Yes. On Because I'm on Golf Channel all day long. All and the so time. are you. Uh, yes, both of us. And he joins us around the table. Welcome to Toronto, Sandsy. Great seeing you, buddy. Yes, you say this stuff to all the girls who come on the show. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Here. By the way, can we talk about what happened during the break? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. Yeah. I have never met these guys. The beauty of what <laughs> <laughs> we do for a living is that when you do radio shows and TV shows around the country, you never meet the people you actually speak with. Right. Yeah. I've been talking with you guys for years. Yes. I think you guys are the coolest cats in the world. Love listening to you. Your whole action's fabulous. Say hello. Sandsy, introduce you each came other. in and you knocked hello. a Diet Coke onto <laughs> right. my computer. What hello. do you want us to do here, Hello. Pal? Hello. Yeah, you middle. knocked we a Diet around. Coke on my new computer, too. I this mean, thing's brand new. There's nothing bad in Diet Coke <laughs> that would hurt the computer whatsoever. <laughs> nothing at all. Either that or you were trying to get rid of some stuff that you were looking at he on was, the computer. That's right. right. Oh, Who knows? Was, exactly. Yeah. Imagine using a Diet Coke without a lid. To block something on your – it made no sense why you had a lidless Diet Coke. Are you, it was are you, one of those things. Are I you was the looking kind of over guy? there at my guy, Luca. Sansy was here. I went to shake hands and knocked the Are thing you the over. kind of guy who puts extra onions on his sandwich when he's about to meet somebody too? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I do like extra onions, okay. not in a public setting. <laughs> That's purely private fair. That's fair. and exclusive. But what a meet It's good and to see you guys. Great seeing you. Sandy yeah. comes in. We're so jacked up to see him. There's Diet Coke all over the place. We just went through <laughs> towels it. or all hell spray. I thought it was loose. great. Absolutely. It's all good. Battle. We move on. That's the way it should be. In the we TV business, we say we move on. We <laughs> move on, right. Sandy, you, you've been up here now. You got up here this morning or last night, I no, guess. No, I got, got up here up yesterday morning. morning. Yeah, so and, and you're doing stuff live from the course, right? Yeah. And, and we were watching you on the golf chat. I've been out here all day. But what do you make of it so far? I, mean, I think it's great. From our view in the booth, it's 72 and sunny. I don't know what the weather is out Right. Side, but it's uh, it's great. I love coming up here, um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm on your guys' show all the time. I think it's fantastic coming up here, not only uh, as a golf fan, but I've been up here for, for hockey games in Toronto sure. and Montreal and, and some over on the West Coast as well with Calgary and Edmonton and Vancouver. And just the vibe you get whenever you come up here to Canada, the people are so darn nice. Everybody's drinking beer. Everybody's yeah. having fun. Everybody's a sports fan. It's just good living. Uh, we love coming up here. The guys love coming up here, too. New golf course, a little bit funky. Sure, it is. Um, yeah. But yep. that's okay. Um, I, I think the guys really enjoy uh, coming up here. It's a great sponsor with RBC. And, look, it's a national championship. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, you, you got a big field. you got a lot of money on the line. you got a lot of history here. And um, you got a pretty good field. I mean, yeah. it, it's you got McElroy here whenever he's here, especially with all the news this week. It's fitting that he is here. Mm. Um, but – yeah, I always think about also like the international guys who probably live in the states or in the states all the time. They come up here; it's a li it's just a little bit different. Yeah, but it's a it little is. bit different, and it maybe makes them feel a little bit like they're back home. It I is. Was, it know. is just a touch different than what we're used to seeing in the United States, but yeah. not much. No, uh, you guys ever had Charles Barkley on your show? Yes, we have. Yes. Charles Barkley will tell you. I've known Charles a long time. This is his favorite city in the world. Right. Not just in North America, in the world. And anybody who's never been here, we said this a couple times on the show today when we were on live. If you've never had the opportunity to come to Toronto, you've got to come. What an awesome place to come. Did you ever and I think the international deep, guys get a good vibe. Did you ever take a deep dive and ask him why? Yeah, <laughs> why does Barkley love Toronto? I was, pretty... was going to leave that part out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. yeah, we would like to know more details uh, on that. I, I yeah. never, never get into someone's business when they partake. Right, yeah. exactly. Me neither, bud. But that's, the, I mean, the nature of the tour is it just it, it moves on. Like it next does. week you're in L.A. It's amazing. Right? Go from it's here just, to L.A. It's Yeah, and obviously, I mean, this week has been a wild week. Are you? Are you were you relieved when we got – pegs in the ground you start playing golf again or you're obviously intrigued by the whole live pga yeah. all that kind of stuff you live it you have to i do it's uh it's fascinating mm -hmm. um for sure for those of us who only do play by play talk to players and come out here it's a little bit of a different scenario for the people who are in the news business on our side of the world they've had a couple of days uh that were very very challenging i, I look sadly i think it was inevitable money always wins and when you have endless funds and you are putting that much pressure on the entity in which you are trying to crush, it seems like what we call in the United States, I'm sure it's the same thing here, it's a hostile takeover. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. It's just the phrase hostile takeover. We hear it all the time in corporations. Right. Clearly, Liv was trying to punish the PGA Tour. Clearly, Liv was trying to outlast the PGA Tour. 
and the the funding won, and, and that's how we are sitting here right now today after all that. But yeah, it was great to get pegs in the ground and and play some golf and not talk about that stuff. Absolutely. Do you have any kind of general idea like what golf could look like in two years? Like they they're saying maybe live will go away. Rory says he hopes it goes away. Right. I personally think the team event, it's something they tried to do differently. It did not work. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know. I think the whole live thing is goofy, even their leaderboards, just the whole thing, the music, shorts. But what could golf look like in a couple years? It's pure speculation because the details aren't out. That was one of the things that was so interesting about the announcement on Tuesday. Clearly, somebody was going to leak those talks yeah. because they would never have put out this big of an announcement if – things weren't fully baked. I mean, we're not even close right. to no knowing blueprint. all the details. There's no, there may be a framework, but there are no details. So I'd be completely speculating, but I have a hard time thinking. If the PGA Tour is going to take the infusion of cash and be in charge after this deal is settled, and they are going to be in charge of that cash and the tour, I have a hard time thinking that the PGA Tour is ever going to look like Liv. I'm with you on Liv. I think it's goofy looking. Uh, I don't like the shorts. I think there's something you aspire when you're a golfer. I'm a sports fan who just does golf. But golfers aspire to be PGA Tour players. They aspire to be professionals. Scotty Scheffler, okay? Scotty Scheffler, as a kid, used to wear pants to junior events when sure, he was a kid sure. because that's how pros dress. So forget the shorts. The music blaring, whatever. 54 holes, that's not real golf. Shotgun start, that's not real golf. Mm -hmm. And you could go on and on and on. If the PGA Tour is going to change a little bit and be more on the progressive side, I have no problem with that. But don't lose the fundamental nature of the game. Right. Hockey, okay, in the United States is the four of the four team sports as far as popularity goes. Sure. One of the reasons for that is because it does, doesn't translate onto TV like the other sports do. It's just not as easy to watch hockey on television. And one of the reasons is because there are two huge breaks after the first and second periods. American television would love to have it just have one halftime and not two periods off because that's a long time to just switch away from a game. I'm not talking about a Canadian audience. I'm right. talking about an American audience. Sure. You can't just change the fundamentals of the sport. Hockey is as great a sport as there is. You guys know how big of a hockey fan I am. Don't change those kinds of things. You want to try some things. The glow puck didn't work. They tried it. They, they, you know, The overtime is different. There are a lot of things that have changed over the years, but the fundamental nature of the sport has not. If the PGA Tour does that, I think you're going to lose a lot of people who are traditionalists and, and, and old guys like us who, who are used to seeing the game played one way. You can't move the rim to 11 feet because the guys are more athletic. You're not going to change a football field you know, in the NFL away from 100 yards uh, just because the guys are quicker and faster and bigger. It, Keep the game the way it is, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I agree. Knowing what you know about golf, and, and O just that said, you know, a couple of years, uh, you know, traditional, what is it going to look like? Right. Do you believe maybe five years from now when this is all behind us as far as, you know, it's, it's one big entity, this will be good for the game, good for the players as far as financially, and it'll grow and, and basically not forgotten but accepted? Yeah, I, it's a great Great question, and I think yes. I think, first of all, time heals all wounds. That's right. the first thing. Right. Everybody is calmer today than they were on Tuesday. Right. Okay, let's put yeah. it that way. And I think that if Rory said it best yesterday when he was interviewed here at the podium, if PIF is going to pump in $20 billion into golf, you might as well make it into PGA Tour golf as opposed to what they were trying to do and right. goof up the game. So if – the game remains the same, relatively, right. for the most part. Five years from now, people are not going to think as much as they do now about where the money is coming from, in my opinion. Right. You? No, I, I think so. I, I think they'll just accept, like we you talked have to about accept it yesterday. It. It's yeah. just, you know, eventually, you may not love everything no. about it, but it's like, hey, it, you know, this is, it's become kind it's, of mainstream norm. They were going to put in $20 billion into the game anyway. So yeah. you might as well put it into the best part of the game and try to grow it and make it larger. You could argue back and forth right. ideologically as to where the money is coming from. Mm -hmm. You could go back and forth on that. With There's, every entity yeah. on With every Earth. business. Yes. You know, exactly. That, that, you know, I, I heard today that the PIF fund um, has, is worth $600 billion. 
and 100 billion of it is invested in the United States, and people don't even know that. Right. Like people don't know where right. that money is coming from. People don't even realize that they own you know, a large stake in Uber, uh, and that Yasser is on the board at Uber, and you know we do business. For them, they do business for us. Right. Who knows how that all works? We're just sports people. Mm. But in my opinion, just sports-wise, yeah. it hasn't ruined soccer. Right. It hasn't ruined Formula One. And now, hopefully, it doesn't ruin golf. Sansy, I have a theory, and no one's kind of bought into it. But my theory is that Rory McIlroy and Tiger Woods would mm-hmm. have been aware that this stuff was going no, down. No, they didn't. Because it's unreal. It is unreal because my, my, my theory is – that Monaghan would never risk those two guys finding this out and being pissed at him and hating his guts. And I, I, I thought he wouldn't risk that. Or Here's why they don't know. They didn't know. First of all, they did not know. They did not, they did not get a phone call until the morning of. So wow. thir- Tuesday morning, a little bit before some of the others got calls. Even right Tiger show, Woods. Tiger and Rory were the two faces of this whole thing for the PGA Tour, and they did not know until Tuesday morning. And there's a good reason for that. No matter whether it's a sports deal or whether it's any other business entity, if you're trying to do a deal the size and the scope of what just took place, no, I get it, Sandy. You can't have complications. And you people you let one person know, and yeah. then you, that person tells a buddy of his when we're out having a couple of beers, and that guy tells his mom, and his mom tells her brother, and yeah. the next thing you know, someone's gonna know. Very few people knew. They kept it very tight-lipped, and I think like time passing in five years, ten years, that people will just accept where the money comes from right. and be okay with it. In my opinion, as we get farther away from Tuesday, I think the players are all going to take a step back and go, how could they have done this and told everybody? I right. would like to think they're going to think that. And I think the smart guys out there on the PGA Tour, who I've spoken to the last couple of days, they already realize that, and they're trying to kind of – go down the line to explain to the guys hey fellas mm. when you're doing billions of dollars of deals here how many people can you tell you can't just tell the whole membership it, right it, it, they did not know amazingly they did not know and i'm more amazed that they kept the whole thing quiet in the first place oh it that was yeah. one of the most incredible most shocking emails that came out tuesday morning i i, I yeah. couldn't believe it. i thought it was a dummy account i, th- I thought it was completely fake and bogus and yeah you do all your fact check do you guys have cnbc up here yeah okay yeah. so cnbc I know I, my business acumen is zero. I'm a sports guy. That's all yeah. I watch is sports and some shows. And I never watch CNBC, and I never know anything about stocks and bonds and business. I don't know any of that stuff. I got a text from a buddy of mine who works at CNBC, a guy you would know by his face. Yep. And he texts me and goes, I know you've never turned on our channel, but you're going to want to this morning. Fired up this morning. <laughs> I, was wow. like, I was like, eh, whatever. And I was like, eh, whatever. He goes, seriously, you're going to want to watch. Check that one Check. out. So all of a sudden I'm watching, I'm like, I mean, wow. you got to be kidding me. Yeah. 